Hey, I'm going to bang this out really quick. This is the pre-show um, for Tipping Point. Tipping Point starts in 45 minutes, um, but it's a prediction show. It's a special show. <clears throat> and tonight we're going to have AC Mac and Tyson Dean on again. Along, We're going to have another guest that we're going to talk to, but we're going to hit the predictions hard with Tyson and AC Mac, me and Larry. Uh, I think last time we were for feeling out the format because I was making it up as we went along. This time we'll just go right to it. But I thought it would be interesting to look back on how we did on our predictions last time. So I'll just go through them really fast. Tyson Dean um, had five predictions that I call his predictions. And out of those five, three of them were right and two of them were wrong. <clears throat> so he only had 60%, which was the lowest percentage. Um, it was also the lowest amount of things that he got right. However, by the way, the things that he got wrong, um, that there would be a catastrophic injury or death in the ring in Georgia, um, which did not happen. And I'm sure we're all glad, especially Tyson Dean, that that did not come true. And he also predicted that promoters were going to be working in lockstep together um, on some way, shape or form. And that did not happen. However, when he was right, he usually he was the one who reached out the boldest with his predictions. And when he was right, Boy, was he right. And the number one thing that he was right about, which at the time when he said it, I just went, that doesn't make any sense, was he was like, the guys won't have to venture out to get good shows, that Georgia was going to become a place where you would have a handful of really great promotions where you could get seen and get work. And I think with Action and Southern Fried and Southern Honor and Anarchy and P, I mean, there was just an AWE, there was just a ton of shows where you could stay at home and still get seen, get known, and get booked on the really quality shows. So he was really right about that. He was also very right about um, when we were doing predictions about each other. Um, this one's pending, but I went ahead and gave it to him. He said that AC would get snatched up in some way, shape, or form within two years. And I think AC's AC Mac is clearly on the uh, path. I think this is the year that AC Mac um, gets the nod from one of the bigs. That's going to be my prediction. I'm going to get that out there fast so I can look like a genius on next year's looking back at this year's predictions. Um, and, and, of course, this funniest one, someone's going to be butthurt by Larry's writing. Um, but Larry's writing, much to the chagrin of a lot of people, was just going to get bigger and more important as the year went on. And he was right. And I would not have thought that that was correct, but he was absolutely right. AC Mac, um, 100%. Four predictions, all kind of out there ones. 100%. So he had the least amount right, technically, but it's because he joined us um, part of the way through. So he wasn't there since the beginning. So he didn't get to give a number of his own predictions. He mostly talked about ours. But um, he said Tyson's school would get more exposure and their, their guys would branch out, which has definitely happened. Um, someone would pitch Larry himself to be part of their show as part of an angle or serving a role in a wrestling show. And he's right. GPW asked if Larry would be a special guest referee. Um, he said somebody would draw a thousand. AC Mac, now I was, I was going to say it and he got it ahead of me, but it's his because he got it ahead of me. And boy, was he fucking right or was he fucking right? And um, <clears throat> He said um, that the South is going to get more exposure in general because the talent is going to be showcased in a bigger way more through places like Action that really wanted to spotlight them. And the production value of example for Southern Honor really gets it out there. And now Anarchy and Southern Fried are putting out more and more promos that anybody can watch in the nation. Uh, just great stuff. Four, four for four, AC Mack, killing it. What can you say? Um, me, I was six for two. Of course, I had predictions up the wazoo all over the place. Let's talk about the ones where I was wrong, wrong, wrong. I said um, two groups were going to fade and fade and fade and almost fade away. And that was Anarchy and Peach State. And in my defense, for most of the year they were. But then they both came back. Anarchy in a big way to the point where I'm going to have a number of really bold predictions about Anarchy that... Um, as far as regaining their spot as the top. So clearly they did not fade away into obscurity, though at one point they were fading pretty hard. And Peach State too, but Peach State has sort of clawed their way back as well. So I was dead wrong about that one in the long term anyway. 
And then the other thing I was wrong about is um, that I thought a number of groups would fold. That didn't happen. Um, groups just did, generally did not go away. None of them. Um, and cool. What was I right about? Oh, that's what I want to talk about. Um, that there was going to be a, a war between old and new and that new was going to win. That the age of everybody bowing at the feet of the likes of Jim Cornette and the mentality of the old school, that the old school was eventually going to lose. And they were. They lost in a big way. I think I think if you and it's not to say that the old school tenets of like storytelling and stuff didn't happen. Uh, but I think people were just less inclined of like ah, back in my day, back in my day, fucking lost big time. I mean, we had superhuman make an appearance against Matt Sells and nobody had shit to say about it in a bad way. Um, if that doesn't tell you everything, it should. Right. Um, I said that Dylan. Dylan is going to get his due as a booker and win Booker of the Year. Holy fucking shit. I actually said it as part of my little diatribe on Dylan and how he was going to get his due as a booker. And he couldn't be ignored anymore. <sighs> Heel pointing at your head. Um, I said Southern Honor was going to rise up and the 2019 was going to be about the haves and the have-nots and the groups that promoted well would win ultimately and the groups that refuse to adapt how they used to promote would also die out and it's true everybody changed how they promoted because of southern honor at least in part pretty awesome i also said that ac mac and here's more things i was right about mm, let's talk about that ac mac <clears throat> i said that wrestlers would steal from him style wise and i see it all the time i'm not going to call it out because that would embarrass people but i i see it uh, AC Mack is an undeniable influence. So many people are on shows with him. Um, and it's, I don't think it's a conscious thing of like, I'm going to steal from AC Mack, but I think his like kind of like his style, his flow, his rap, his, his whole thing. I think you can't help but be influenced by it. He's clearly the guy. At one point I sort of cited Jimmy Rave. A lot of people sort of imitated whether they knew it or not stuff from Jimmy Rave. And I think a lot more people crib from, I see AC Mack and Logan Creed as like the two top. And I think a lot more people crib from AC Mack than Logan Creed. Right. Um, for any number of reasons. So I'll give that to AC Mack. I said uh, Tyson is going to continue to run a big show and be cited behind the scenes um, for advice. And he is. I know this. And um, I told prediction related to Larry was that a lot of people were going to start their own wrestling news sites and podcasts and fail at them. <laughs> that definitely happened. So I was at 75%, Larry was at 83%, AC Mack at 100% perfect, Tyson at 60%, but when he was right, he was right. He really reached, he really did things in the spirit of the predictions, which is he fucking went way out there. I can't wait to hear what he thinks um, this time around. Larry's predictions, <clears throat> again, he was five and one. So the one he was wrong about, and I think it was more wishful thinking that Scenic City was going to do a show related to that whole thing that was not going to be in a high school gym. <laughs> and he was wrong. I, I contacted the Scenic City guys just to make sure. And sure enough, they did four shows and all of them were in high school gyms. So Larry was wrong about that. But what was he right about? Um, AC Matt gets on bigger shows, top star in Georgia and other parts of the country. I, I, you just can't get better than that. Tyson is going to survive running a promotion for a year without losing his mind. <laughs> he was right about that. Um, that there is going to be no major retirements in 2019. He was right about that. That the business peaks in spring and then follows its usual pattern. Larry was right about that. Houses went down almost universally. People are going to try to argue, but there's no doubt that spring things peaked and then Summer, they faded and blah, blah, blah. And by the end of the year, starting in late fall, it started to come back. Um, <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, that there was going to be a lot of spots in a lot of different shows. That Contrary to what I said, that there was going to be a bunch of promotions at Fold, Larry predicted that there was going to be more promotions and more really prominent spots. And that a lot of new guys were going to get opportunities that they never got to rise much faster. He was absolutely right about that. And that they were going to do really great in those positions. I think if you look at the most improved, for example, um, you can see that. Or even the, the, the women of the year, a lot of those people really weren't actively wrestling or stars the year before, and all of them are now. So it's really something else. He was right on for that prediction, just nailed it. And then finally, um, <clears throat> boop, 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 boop. oh no. AC, yep, yep, that's Larry's predictions. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get this up. But first, I'm wearing this shirt, my Marvel Contest of Champion shirt sent to me. Uh, and it turns out those decks of cards were sent to me by somebody involved with Extra Life, um, which is the charity. Um, I, I raise money for the Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital, but I do it through Extra Life, which is the group of gamers who um, uh, collect donations in, in exchange for playing for 24... It's supposed to be 24 hours over a whole year. I just do it as a stunt for a 24-hour period. Um, I really encourage you to contribute. Um, it, I, it starts the Sunday Sunday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon before President's Day, and then it goes into President's Day. And I play for 24 hours straight. I do hourly sort of posts. I take pictures of a chalkboard, keeping you up to date. What is what is my win streak at? Um, how many millions of points do I have, hopefully? And uh, how much money have I raised? And, you know, the first year I did this, I less than 100. Second year, 100. Third year, in the 300s. Uh, the year after that, in the 400s. And last year, um, 600s, um, which is really great. Um, and this year, I have a number of giveaways uh, I have an extra that extra Bruiser Brody shirt, which I have not worn, um, by the way. And now I have a deck of cards with the, me and Jeff G. <laughs> Jeff G. Bleeding. Uh, I will throw in um, the first iteration of the Stephen Platinum shirt as well. Uh, and then hopefully work is going to kick in some prizes, so I'll have those to throw in as well, um, which are which are expensive things that I'm going to throw in. But um, please think about donating um, if you need any information about it. Um, I'm sure I'll do a, a specific video about what I'm doing and why. Um, I've been told a number of uh, content creators related to Marvel Contest of Champions who always post on YouTube about Marvel Contest of Champions are going to give me a shout out and talk about what I'm doing as well. Because in game terms, I'm trying to do something very difficult. I'm, I'm John Henry against the freaking Steam Machine because there are a number of guys who illegally use bots. In other words, they just have the compute have a computer play for them and make it so their guys win these fights quickly, but with one hit, just cheating left and right, and they just pile up points. But I've been saving this one thing to sort of equalize the distance that is legal and is fair. Um, but I have to play near flawlessly for 24 hours in order to try to beat the bots, hashtag, um, that I'm going to try to do this year. Anyway, uh, Tipping Point's going to start in about 30 minutes. I'm curious um, how we're going to do it. Usually the format goes like this. I ask people, do, what's a positive promotion? What's a positive prediction? Next person, what's a negative prediction? What's positive? What's a negative? And then, and then we just sort of go from there. The only thing that I'm going to keep for sure, I'm going to keep that format, and then I'm going to keep um, us making predictions about each other because that because that proved to be a lot of fun. And I think this year we have a lot more to talk about. And this year we're prepared. I know that um, AC Mac and and Tyson Dean have prepared, as have I, by listening to the show. So anyway, um, this is the pre-show. Please enjoy. Please watch or listen to tipping point and I'm probably going to do a post show as well.